while I realize the OGL scandal is the current hot topic that everyone's focused on in regards to Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons and everything else, it's not the only scandal that has rocked them in recent years. And when you look back to TSR's litigatious past, Wizards of the Coast under its current management has sort of been falling along in the same footsteps as their predecessor in the more modern history of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, one has to look no further than the book deal that Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman entered into in 2018 with Wizards of the Coast to create a new trilogy of Dragonlance novels that were going to coincide with the launch of the new Dragonlance campaign, which, as we all know, launched uh, end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, the Shadow Queen. I forget the name of it, actually. Um, I think it's the Shadow Queen, something like that. Rise of the Shadow Queen. Anyway, um, Weiss and Hickman being the original authors of the Dragonlance novels, and Hickman and his wife being the original creators of the Dragonlance world and the setting that they brought to the table uh, all those years ago and used as the setting which then spun off into novels and video games and everything else, they were back in the spotlight again after many years of off doing different things, creating a new trilogy of books for all of us fans who love the Dragonlance setting. And if you're like me, I'm one of the people who puts Dragonlance above Forgotten Realms in terms of my personal enjoyment. As much as I love the Forgotten Realms, Dragonlance has always been the world that has a better setting for me. That's just personal enjoyment, mostly tied to my love of Weiss and Hickman as a writing duo, not just from their Dragonlance novels, but also the Death Gate, the Ninth Gate, Death Gate cycle, just... Oh my god, that series is amazing. They also did the Dark Sword series. Um, so much beyond just the Dragonlance world. Um, and, and for me, I've just loved their writing as a duo over the years. And so I was really happy to see them back in the saddle. But then we got wind that it was being canceled. And they apparently had pulled the plug and pulled the rug out from underneath Weiss and Hickman, which prompted a lawsuit. Now, for those of you who didn't know this um let's dive in this happened of a while back now it's been a couple of years ago now um so they eventually dismissed the case without prejudice because a settlement was reached and we're going to go through all of this but what that essentially means is that um weiss and hickman filed a lawsuit they filed uh three different grievances for 30 million dollars uh, and we're going to go into what those things were. They asked for a jury trial, all this other stuff, and eventually um, reached an out-of-court settlement with Wizards of the Coast. And um, after the fact, agreed to you know dismiss without prejudice. Um, which, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we'll we'll get into that at another point in time. That's that's the most important thing right now. Dismissed without prejudice because they reached a settlement agreement. Um, and part of that settlement agreement was agreeing to dismiss it without anything ever actually going to court. So let's dive into this. Um, Bounty in the Comics has a pretty good overview of it. Um, they initially sued Wizards of the Coast for over $30 million, claiming they breached a license agreement for the new Dragonlance trilogy. Um, the lawsuit revealed that they had been contracted by Wizards of the Coast. Uh, this was in 2018 to uh, license a new Dragonlance trilogy that would be published by Penguin Random House or under the Del Rey um, label. Uh, they then began work on the trilogy and had even sent Wizards of the Coast the manuscript of the first book. They approved that first manuscript in January of 2020 and then had begun work on various language editions and they had already begun work on the second and third novel. And then suddenly by August of 2020, um, Wizards of the Coast sent them a message saying that they would no longer approve any further drafts of book one or any subsequent works in the trilogy, effectively repudiating and terminating the license agreement, which basically left them on the hook for all the work that they had done, work that they had lost by agreeing to work on this and nothing else, and then not to mention all of the lost earnings and everything else that they were going to get from this because they had planned for this to be a thing. Plus it jeopardizes jeopardized their publishing deal. There's a lot of things that happened here. Um, and if you read on to read the seat, um, they alleged that no reason was provided for the termination and the termination was wholly arbitrary and without contractual basis. They then went on to claim that the termination was unlawful and in violation of multiple aspects of the license agreement in fact, the termination also had the knowing and premediated effect of precluding publication and destroying the value of Weiss and Hickman's work, not to mention their publishing deal with Random, uh, Penguin Random House. And it was basically not going to allow them to do anything with that content ever because 
they don't own the copyrights everything it was a licensing deal the suit also claimed that wizards of the coast terminated the license agreement because Wizards of the coast was and i quote here embroiled in a series of embarrassing public disputes whereby its non-dragonlance publications were exorciated for racism and sexism so this was around the time that they were starting to take a lot of heat for all the racist stuff that was in their publications and consequently led to the morality clause that they're trying to push down everyone's throat right now um with the OGL 1.2 and all that controversy. Uh, Weiss and Hickman are informed to believe and based thereon alleged that a discussion was made jointly by Wizards of the Coast and its parent company Hasbro Inc. to deflect any possible criticism or further public outcry regarding Wizards of the Coast's other properties by effectively killing the Dragonlance deal with Weiss and Hickman. They would then bring three claims against Wizards of the Coast, the first being breach of contract, the second breach of implied duty of good faith and fair dealing, and third, the third was uh, torturous, is it torturous? I forget how to pronounce that, interference with contract. Weiss and Hickman were seeking in excess of $10 million for each claim. Now, this put Wizards of the Coast into a panic because there's multiple things here. First and foremost, Weiss and Hickman are beloved by everyone in the Dragonlance and Dungeons and Dragons communities. These are the authors of the original trilogy of books that created this entire saga of Dragonlance novels that came out in the 80s. Um, Hickman and his wife created this setting and and you know not only that but Weiss and Hickman went on to do all these other things together as authors which I previously mentioned all of which began with them starting to work together on that first Dragonlance novel all the way back in the day. So they've got the goodwill of generations of Dungeons and Dragons fans behind them, whereas Witches of the Coast doesn't. So it looked really bad when this lawsuit came out. And I was very, I was surprised that this had happened because, but in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, this corporate shenanigans. Like every company out there thinks that they can just pull the rug out from one of these, these authors. And, and this is the perfect case of, because Weiss and Hickman don't own it, even though Hickman and his wife created Dragonlance, they don't own any of the trademarks or any of the copyrights because they gave that all up and signed that away when they joined on as employees way back in the day, um, which is a very sad state of affairs. Um, it's it's the one that's the one thing that's really interesting about the Ed Greenwood deal with the, he, that Ed Greenwood has with um, Wizards of the Coast in regards to Forgotten Realms, because even though he did sell the rights, he still maintains the right to create additional novels and all this other stuff. It's a, it's a different licensing deal, but very interesting take on things. Anyway, Weiss and Hickman wanted a jury trial, because they were like, this is bullshit. Like, you guys are trying to cancel this with, with all these issues, as they listed. They wanted to take it to trial. Um, Wizards of the Coast was in a panic about this, so much so that they immediately reached out for a settlement agreement. Discussions were had, and they apparently reached a settlement because eventually um, they um, dismissed it without prejudice um, and said hey, they have not filed an answer to motion of January 7. A proceedings of discovery have been undertaken as these claims that this action is not subject to any federal statute which preclude the dismissal of this action. So it says here, for those unfamiliar with legal jargon, the Legal Information Institute defines dismissal without prejudice as when a case is dismissed without prejudice, but it also leaves the plaintiff free to bring another suit based on the same grounds, for example, if the defendant doesn't follow through with the terms of a settlement. So basically they settled without prejudice saying, look, we're agreeing to dismiss this based on Wizards of the Coast offering us a settlement deal that we agreed to. But if they don't follow through with that settlement, we reserve the right to go back to court for these same issues down the road. And eventually, later on, they would make a statement um, in retweeting about how the Dragonlance suit has been settled. Um, and we eventually got to the publication of that first book very recently, I think. And of course the new Dragonlance campaign, which came out end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, and it, you know, they're on continuing to create additional Dragonlance content, which I'm really happy about because I think that uh, Weiss and Hickman write good books together. And I think that they should be allowed to continue to create Dragonlance content, to profit from Dragonlance content. I think that um, if you've ever listened to like the the story of um sylvester stallone and his fight for the rights to the rocky franchise um because when he was younger you know he 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 so he signed a rights agreement and in his elderly years 
wishes he hadn't done that. And he's tried to work with the person who owns it, but that person is like, nah, screw you. It's worth millions and millions of dollars. I can't help it that you were young and stupid. A contract is a contract. It's mine. I don't care if you created it. Um, also looking at um, the creator of The Witcher and signing the rights away to The Witcher video games and then coming back 25 years, whatever it was, years later and saying, you know what? I didn't think the video game was going to do anything. Now it has. You guys have continued to profit off of my content for years and years and years. I don't think that that's fair. I would like to renegotiate the contract. Some people out there are like, no, no, contract is a contract. If you were too young and stupid to sign an agreement when you were 20 years old, that's your fault. You know, you don't. And this this story plays out with with um, actors all the time and musicians as well. They get into a contract and 30 years later, they realize that it's an extremely abusive contract and they want to try to renegotiate. And when there's millions of dollars at stake, the people who hold those rights are very, very, you know, against giving up anything because it's millions of dollars of profit. Um, but I do think that there's something to be said for being fair. And unfortunately, everyone's definition of what's fair sometimes goes out the window when there's money involved. But in any case, the current fiasco with the OGL is not Wizards of the Coast's first time having some sort of litigious issues going on with Dungeons and & Dragons and trying to stiff other people for royalties and creative control over things. Thankfully, Weiss and Hickman reached a an agreement, an out-of-court resolution with Wizards of the Coast, and we're going to continue to get new Dragonlance content, which is great. But I thought it was a very interesting thing to talk about, given the current situation and all the things that are going on with the OGL right now and and the current chaos with Dungeons & Dragons. Food for thought. Anyway, if you like this stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support if you can with Super Chats. Super thanks. Don't forget memberships here on YouTube. You could also go to the Patreon page. There's a Discord down below. All those links are down there. Until next time, everybody, happy gaming. Stay safe out there. Happy reading, too, if you like Dragonlance. Cheers.